Hello everyone and welcome back for this new episode of Coding Design System with George. Hello George, how are you? Hello Mads, what's up? Oh, a lot of things, a lot of things to do. We are working on um, a lot of stuff. I'm revamping the Svel starter kit right now. So um, it's really, really exciting because I'm, I'm trying to find a way to uh, scope the different tokens in the components themselves rather than relying on an external style ship. So it's a bit challenging, but it, um, it's really fun. If you missed the episode with, um, with Brittany uh, about Svelte, I recommend you to, to have a look at it because it was really, really exciting and really wonderful. But today we're going to talk about something else. We're going to talk about web components and more specifically about web components from the Clever Cloud collection with Hubert Sablonnière. Hello, Hubert. How are Hello. You? I'm very, very glad to, to meet you both. Uh, I've been expecting this for the past few weeks, but um, yeah, I'm really glad to, I, I love to share stuff. I love web components, so I'm really here to, to share my love about what, what we've been doing at Clever Cloud with them. Awesome. Awesome. So um, we've got... And, and for the first time, we have the French connection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this, this time, this is a real French connection because um, the episode with Kelly, Kelly is, is in California, you know, so it's almost a French connection, but we're all based in France for this one. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. It's really cool to do that. Um, thank you for being here. It's um, Thank you for having it's, me. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Um, so for people who, who don't know you, you're a, um, a web developer. I'm yeah. an expert in many technologies <laughs> <laughs> and a talented speaker because um, I still Thank do you. love your, uh, your different talks. It was, uh, it was always brilliant uh, and enthusiastic. So thank you so much for that. Um, could you just present a bit yourself about what you are doing right now, where you come from and so on? Yeah, sure. So I started working in two, 2009, I think. And uh, I, I did a, a bit of PHP, a bit of Java. Uh, I was about to say as anyone, but not really anyway. <laughs> uh, and then I really um, specialized in, in, in the web. Uh, I, I'm, sometimes I say front end, but I really like to say web because I think my, what I really like to do in, also involves what happens in, um, in browsers. So it, it involves HTML, CSS, JS, HTTP, uh, performance, security, et cetera. It's, it's not only front end, but m more of the what's happening in browsers and, and in the, the pipes, the internet and the web pipes. So yeah, as, as kind of say specialized in, in those um, perimeter, if I could say, uh, I worked for a consulting company for seven years. So then I worked with the awesome folks at Open Device who work on ASCII Doctor and uh, Entora. And uh, I've joined uh, Clever Cloud like a bit, a bit more than four years ago. Uh, I started started my fifth year in January. Uh, and at Clever Cloud, I've been involved in the CLI, our Clever Tools, um, and the, or mainly the the web UI, the what we call the the console, which is the client facing uh, administration dashboard that our users use uh, day to day. Um, we will talk uh, about more details about this afterwards. I wanted to say, yeah, uh, for those who don't really know about Clever Cloud, it, it's a, mainly a platform as a service company. So you do a Git push, we take your code and, and we make it awesome online, basically. <laughs> we try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's uh, exciting and challenging. So, um, yeah, but I don't, I don't handle the, the, hard stuff with the servers and the network. So all my awesome colleagues do that. So yeah, the, the steam and grease is for other people. Who yeah, are just, I just do the CSS, you know, the basic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you make things pretty, as they say. <laughs> yeah. We try to. <laughs> so in the, in the context of um, this console at Clever Cloud, uh, um, you, you were, um, you were um, I don't know, first or engaged at some point to, to produce web components um, dedicated to, to this particular aspect of the, the interface. And you choose to open source the, the different, different components in a collection. Um, that's what we want to discuss today um, in this very specific episode. Um, and um, so, yeah, my, my, my first question is, 
why building this collection of web components? What what do you did you try to solve at first? Yeah. So uh, basically, the the um, code code base of the console that our users are using day to day is a some kind of single page application that is around 10, 10 years old. So the tech stack and the, um, some of the UI and the UX is also 10 years old almost, and it never had a big bang refactor, you know. So what we wanted to do is uh, try to migrate the, the tech stack going from templating with Lodash it works. <laughs> uh, doing lots of jQuery and 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 using streams with with uh, Bacon JS, and we wanted to to have uh, a better experience while while developing stuff, lower bundles, uh, more modern dependencies, and we wanted to do that progressively. So we decided to create this project uh, separated from the console with uh, low-level and high-level components, like just buttons and, and really uh, uh, clever cloud domain-related high-level components. So we could plug them in the legacy code base. And the idea is that step-by-step, step, all new features and existing features go in there. And in the end, the console will be only some kind of skeleton and we'll be able to migrate all those components in a new uh, you nest. Um, so that was the 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 reflection we we had on this, and we decided to go f uh, for web components using Lit. Uh, and we, I have really have to say, we love this project and this tool uh, because we 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 are really fond of uh, low level stuff, very close to the standards, and I really think uh, Lit is. And we wanted uh, to be able to, to port those components in our future console, our future, um, uh, once we, we, we will be able to do the migration. And when you don't know what will be this um, new project where we'll have to, to, to plug those components, you just have to prepare for the future. So uh, we really bet on, it was around 2019. Um, Lit was there, but not that famous. Uh, not sure if it's it, it's more well known today, but uh, it's still very far from from you know the the cool kids. Mm. And uh, but we 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 are really uh, really glad with that choice. And the other um, need, if I could say, was to be able to plug those components in our clients, um, some of our clients build their own custom dashboards. So if we were able to say, oh, you have to display some live logs or maybe um, uh, edit some environment variables, we just have a, a component for that. So um, that was the gist and also white la labeling and gray labeling uh, partnership where they could use our components. We are still on the only us are using those, but uh, we already started to use them outside of the console. So those components are present on our uh, documentation, which is uh, a Yugo static site generator. Mm -hmm. uh, the website, which is WordPress, uh, an internal app, which is Java. And I mean, the ubiquity of web components uh, really works there because we are able to use them in many different tech stacks and that's just a proof that it, it, it really works. Yeah, always bet on web standards and <laughs> yeah. bet on web components at the world. Exactly. And why, why, why did you choose a lead as a framework for a web, your web components? Because um, for, um, for you people following us right now, we are producing um, a, a blog post named All the Ways to Make a Web Component. And um, this is a blog post that we regularly update. And um, I can open right now. Yeah. 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 This I, blog post is awesome. Share your screen, own. George. Yeah. And uh, in this blog post, we, we are comparing, we are benchmarking more than 60 uh, flavors <laughs> of building a web component. So there is a lot of um, different choices. We, we, we made the choice just to create a simple button, simple console with, with two buttons. And um, and there is a lot of implementation using 
raw level um, web components to really advance with compilation like Stencil and so on. So, um, so yeah, there is a lot of frameworks right now to build web components. So why, why did you choose Lita at first? If I remember correctly, and I really wanted to write uh, an ADR for this, uh, an architecture decision record to document why we chose this, but I didn't, and it's still in my to-do in my head because uh, I often have the, the question asked uh, to me. Uh, I think we considered back then Stencil a lit. I also looked at wh which one is the one really based on objects, hybrids? Hybrids. Yeah. Well, I tried hybrids. At I like time, I, hybrids was, uh, was yeah. uh, pretty famous. Yeah. I tried it, but it had a few stuff too opinionated for me. Yeah. Uh, again, I was mostly the one using them. Now we are a team. So I, I made a few choices by myself, um, talking with my manager, of course. But um, yeah, the the problem I had with the stencil, it, it's, it's based on GSX. So it requires, and, and not only for that, but it requires lots of compilation steps, mm -hmm. etc. And we are just uh, looking for something as simple as it can be. And Lit doesn't require this if you're using the Vanilla JS um, flavor version. And um, and it's really close to the standard. I mean. When you have a web component, you extend HTML element. When you have, when you're using lit elements, you're just extending lit elements. So you're you're placing one thin layer between your code and the standard. And yeah, I I, I really like the the way they are approaching this problem. Fast um, came up afterwards, and I may have considered it uh, if we if we had chose um, made our choice afterwards um but yeah i think that that's the three of them we we tried um lit stencil and, and hybrids and I, I i really don't want to come back uh, i mean the the team grew, grew up uh the documentation is is really nice um there are lots of stuff um that you problems that you face uh, that are not lit related. I mean, oh, I have this problem with the CSS part, but it's just a web component problem or question, or and and you don't have those uh, you know foo stuff and bar stuff that are really specific to one environment. There are, but not that much, and so yeah. Okay. And, and were you uh, were you users of uh, the the uh, the OpenVC uh, tools? Um, so back thing? then, if I remember, in in um, twenty nineteen, uh, the folks at OpenWC were already there, already working on their guides and tools. But it was uh, it was not as as um, mature as it's right now. I would say uh, I tried a few stuff. Uh, but yeah, it was, I don't remember the dates well, but uh, I know I tried a few stuff and, and right now we are using and abusing their awesome test runner and uh, web dev server, their HMR um, plugin for, for hot module replacement. So yeah, the, the folks at OpenWC and, and Modern Web are, are really producing awesome tools around the open web and, and web components. And we also... Um, Sorry for the shameless plug. We also con contributed a roll-up plugin to the modern web uh, um, code base, recent, uh, like a year ago. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, there is another part of the project that is very interesting, um, in my opinion, in that you had built um, a smart CDN to distribute to those web components. And this is... Um, despite the fact that you, you are a platform as a service provider. So hosting is definitely your stuff. But, but yeah. wh why did you choose this uh, specific way to, to deliver and to distribute your content? Yeah, so as I said, the, the main application where we use those components is a single page app. It's using Webpack. And so we have lots of NPM installs. And so we are installing our component library as a, an NPM module. We bundle it with Webpack, etc. 
But when I was discussing with my manager, uh, Quentin, he, uh, I, we were discussing and, and he said, uh, so how, how can, I, can people use our components if it's a partner, a, a client, etc.? So he was like, mm, well, you have to do uh, an AP, NPM install, so you need to have Node.js and NPM on your machine. And then you have to plug your uh, bundler because you are going to use our components with uh, bare, in, bare import specifiers, you know, where you do import something from, and between quotes, you put uh, the name of the module on NPM. It doesn't work natively in the browser. You have to have a regular URL. So I was like, yeah, so you'll have to configure a bundler, then you open the box of uh, Webpack and, and Rollup and stuff. Um, and he was like, yeah, no. We're not going to do that. And and he was telling me about people not really uh, into those, not just hardcore stuff, people using Java, using PHP that just want to use a few components in the most plug and play way in the easiest way possible. And that's where we decided to, to create this smart CDN where you just put a, a, a script tag. It has a few query parameters where you specify the version, the language, and the list of components you want. And it tries to load only the components you'll need uh, in the best performant way that you can have with uh, such a, a loading mechanism. And I did a talk in French in two conferences, but you have to watch both talks because the first part of the first one is good and the second part of the other. Anyway, but this is where <laughs> I explain everything where you know, we, we are all, we all have the, the assumption that uh, using NPM and a bundler will be faster than loading modules one by one with, a, with just a script tag. And basically, we managed to, to come up with a solution that is not that bad, I would say. Hmm. And so we are using this mechan mechanism on our documentation site and website. So because it's a, web, a WordPress or Yugo, we don't have to set up a bundler. We just put a script tag in and it just works, you know. Cool. Yeah. That's, that's, that's something <laughs> that I, I found that really awesome and really clever the way just, you know, just specifying what you want. And it's like having a, a server side web pack that is bundling the different components that you want and serve it. And this is, this is definitely good way to do so or at least a really interesting way to do so so um sure so yeah um should you try to to implement it in backlight and play with the components in backlight george let's do this okay let's play with it so um so we're gonna we're gonna start a new project yes yeah, i didn't start one so let's create a blank one and and let's start with um with few web components. We go blank. So is there one you, you particularly want to try at first or to, to work with at first, uh, Hubert? Mm, I was thinking about that before. I'm not sure. C can you open the, our storybook? Yep. Um, we could reuse one of the... Um, maybe graphic components where where we have uh, some charts um but they are not that um uh, customizable uh let me think but yeah you, you, hmm. so the storybook is here oh no this yeah. is the github page by the way oh no this if, is the Yes, yeah, this is the storybook. Yeah. If you go below on on the left, you have um, a section which is which is called overview, oh. and you have a few tile components. So the one with the status code has a, some kind of uh, uh, pie chart, so it's kind of visual, and yep. um, we we could reuse this one maybe, uh, but it's not that configurable. Uh, let me look. And we can push some uh, data into it, is it? What did you say? Oh, some... 
we can push data uh, into yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, uh, you can go in the docs um, tab of uh, Storybook at yep. the top, and if you uh, click on Show Code, you'll have an example uh, a bit below the yeah. Just here, you'll have an example with some data. Yeah. And so this is uh, this is an attribute. Then this is a you pass a string or the object yeah. in. It's a, it's an attribute. The basically the component is expecting an object uh, with the status code. It's documented just below, and so we are uh, allowing our users of the components to pass mm -hmm. object as JSON when they are in pure HTML. Okay. Oh, let's uh, let's do this. There's a few things we can do. Yeah. Um, so okay, I'm just gonna quickly uh, change that. Um, Saber Cloud Stream, and we and uh, we can create the new component. And so, um, how is it called? Uh, it's called CC uh, Clever Cloud Tile Status yeah, Code. Tile Status yeah. Code. So let's do um, ion status code the same way. And so we can do right away, we can, I think we can go straight into a story. Yeah. Uh, and so this is where you're going to tell me how to import uh, a <laughs> little so, thing. Yeah, the, the package on NPM is called at clevercloud slash components. So you can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how does it work in backlight? Do you have to uh, specify it somewhere in some kind of package, yeah. JSON? Yeah. Clevercloud components okay. like this? Yeah. This and and I just import it uh, as it or should I? Import? No, you have to import them one by one. So okay. if you're using this one, and it's not that easy in the um, in our documentation right now, you have to know where to find it. Mm -hmm. But you need to add slash dist. Uh, I'm just gonna yeah. add the clever yeah, on sure. the dependencies. Uh, the latest. There you go and then. And so slash yeah, yeah, slash dist slash uh, overview um, and slash cc dash tile dash stat status dash codes. Uh, it, I think it's plural, yeah, codes. And dot js, yeah. Are you using um, aliases in the package uh, JSON file uh, at the root level of the of the? Um... You mean to simplify the imports? Yeah. Um, no. No, but we are considering removing the dist and the um, subfolder before publishing to NPM because those folders help us to organize the, the code base and the components. But as a user, you don't really have to, to bother about that. And since those are web components, the naming will be unique among the whole library. So we could put all of them in the same, at the root, I would mm. say, of the NPM package. Yeah, sure. Mm, did I, did, I did something wrong? No. He's complaining so about dependency. I, mm. I, I kind of have a clue of maybe what's happening, but, um, so the the package is installed right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the story is here, uh, but I'm trying to import that thing, mm. and it is complaining. Yeah. I think I have an ID. Let me try another one. Um, Let me look at how the package is done. Yeah. Yeah, can you try another component if this one works? I think I know where it comes from. Yeah, are you loading them from an unpack unpackage? No. No, okay. We, we bundle one. them. Okay, yeah. And you have, uh, what kind of tool do you use to bundle them? Uh, Rollup. 
Hmm, interesting. But if you are, if you need a specific plugin, then maybe. Normally, no. But <laughs> uh, should, should, we we try, are... should we try? Yeah, with should we try the CDN maybe, or, uh, or we could, try yeah. One? But can you try the beta one, which is the first one at the top in the atoms section? It's beta. just a yeah. It's just a component to to add a beta ribbon. Yep. So you can import it with uh, the same kind of URL. Uh, yeah, and you can copy paste that example. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah. This, this would be... Yeah. Try uh, instead of the first import. Uh, yeah. So it's beta. Yeah. And atoms instead of overview. I think it's... if. This one works. Huh, interesting. There you oh, go. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. And then you have the problem. Now I have a, a really good, um, a really good um, opportunity to, to also talk about why we created the Smart CDN because our components are, are translated. So when you use them, you also have to import the, the interna internationalization system and configure it for a given language. So it's a bit of boilerplate, which is documented in the, in the repo. And basically, our smart CDN takes care of all that. Uh, so that's also why it's way easier to use them that way. So basically, what's happening is that we... <laughs> We decided to translate beta, which has a different spelling in French. It has a, a circumflex on, on the E. And so because the translation system is not uh, configured, you have some angry emoji instead of uh, the real text. <laughs> is, it, and, is, is it just a, just a, a, a coincidence or, or did you, you really want it? No, to we, we decided the, the to do that. Emojis. Yeah, <laughs> when it's not working, it displays lots of angry, angry emojis. Um, and it confirms also that the other component doesn't work, I think, uh, because the, the bundle you're using and the way it's configured, I think, doesn't really like our use of new URL and import meta URL. But mm. normally it should work. Anyway, I think going the the um, smart CDN way should be okay. As long as you can um, import from HTTP, right? Oh. Yep. Okay. Definitely try something like this. Uh, um... Yeah, and uh, you said the one. Da, da, da. So I do I need? To, oh yeah, uh, you you have you need one more parameter, um, which is uh, what's it called? Should I look in the doc? Uh, mm -hmm. Fill. Uh, yeah, forces the slot element to fill the beta container size. I think it's this one. Yeah. Not sure. I haven't used it in ages. No more betas in Clever Cloud, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the beta component is is uh, is in beta. Um, <laughs> oh, weird. Yeah, it's still on the right hand side. Is that because it's a block? Should be in line. Yeah, I, um, I'm not sure. It's weird. And if you put inline block, but with height, yeah. Maybe a positioning issue if you try to position relative your component. Yeah, it's weird. Let's yeah. have a look. Looking for it. It worked two minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, you can cheat and change the position to top right. Uh, yeah, it's top left. Why is it position in top? No, right? no, no. I changed it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The attribute, oh, yeah. The attribute okay. is different. Yeah. That... <laughs> Cheating, but it works. Um, hmm. 
Okay, and um, and so you're saying we need some sort of internalization, internationalization, but we can't do that right now. It's it's possible. You you can copy past something that it's in that is in the documentation, but um, it's a bit cumbersome. But it could work. Uh, can you go on the on the um, storybook? Yeah. And at the top, you have a uh, document which is called how to translate and localize. And then uh, you can use this example, you'd say. Yeah. The asynchronous setup example. That's ah, just here. This one. Yeah. And this is what needs to be needs yeah, to this run should, on, on every this story. This should work with the French version. But if you want to, you can replace the URL to have the English one. Okay. Um, so let's see how we're going to do this. So I think I'm going to do. Uh, Stories uh, dot preview. Yeah, JS. that's clever. <laughs> I'm gonna. I, 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 I always forget about this one, but, but we do support this feature, so uh, yeah, definitely, that's the best place to do so. And but it's still uh, complaining, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have to import this preview? No, you don't. No, it's a uh, this thing. Da, da, da. Mm. Yeah, it's weird. Is it? How does it work in in the back? Is it using the? Uh, it's, working. it's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. Oh, okay. It's okay. Just that something needs to yeah to be refreshed. To be loaded. Yeah. Okay. Can you try to change it in English, maybe? Yeah. Just to see if it works. So I just put it yeah. in here? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's... yeah so there seems to be some kind of a race condition to, to load it somehow. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I need to look into this. Yeah. I'm here to make yeah. everything break. Sorry. No. No, that, that's interesting. It means that maybe we have an issue when trying to load asynchronous content in the stories. In the preview. stories preview. Yeah. It's really interesting. We need to look into this. Yeah. Yeah. If if you use the the synchronous version, could work. I, I, are you able to do a stories preview that HTML somehow, or like like you could do in a storybook? Uh, what do you mean? I was wondering, I think in my storybook, I can uh, specify some HTML uh, directly uh, in the configuration of the storybook. But anyway, yeah. That, yeah, okay. we, we could, but you mean for the CDN, uh, for the CDN um, test? No, just that. Uh, no, it's okay. Don't, don't worry. Uh, ah, was... Are you talking about this? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, there is other ways we could uh, have done it, uh, but... Uh... Because that's also something that is to know with our component library is that you need to register this uh, translation system before you you use the components. Yeah, it's a bit. Mm, we could say limited, but in our usage, it's never a problem. So, and this is like uh, this is the same, but a synchronous example, right? Yeah, this is probably be working better in. Uh, I think so. In here. Because with the dynamic import, I think the browser um, lets, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Not, yes, yeah. Uh, because you 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 have to set the set language, I guess. That's probably. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. It's still it set. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. I think it works so, now. So we yeah, do have issues with the. Uh... Yeah, with unsynchronous. Uh, loading in, in the it's not really an issue from your side. It's because the browser would let the dynamic import work and then load the component uh, and then register the language yeah. afterwards. So it's not yeah, really exactly. your fault. That's exactly what's happening. Yeah. So, uh, okay, cool. Um, yeah. So we have one, um, one story. Uh, should we try another one? This yeah, is fun. yeah sure. we should try uh um i kind of like your short and um, <laughs> i kind of want to try it do you what want do you to, to try the smart component the smart cdn yeah we can yeah. Good so idea. 
if you go to components.clevercloud.com, we have a very work in progress UI uh, to help you uh, load the component. Uh, like this? Yes. As I said, really work in progress, right? Oh, but this is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. But this so. UI is using our own components, which is like so meta. Um, if you so I'm going to take the button and I'm going to take the beta. Yeah, and if and you take, take style the... uh, status code uh, on the here. left. Yeah. yeah, here. So because you chose those in English in version 7.6.0, you have a um, script tab that you can copy past and there's a, a click to to copy on the right of the yeah and and what is this is this a module that i can import or um... yeah it's exactly a, 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 a javascript module esm standard that you can use in a script tag mm, okay. which means we could import it directly into yeah. the stories. Yeah, we can, we yeah. can do both. You so, can uh, either put the straight tag or it, do an uh, import. Yeah. And so let's say we're going to we're gonna mix match a little bit here. Uh, let's say I want to do uh, button and I want to do, <laughs> so I'm just going to pick that up. Uh, And just to try it out. Um, and so I'm going to import that new URL. Mm -hmm. Actually, in that example, I can just do this, yeah. I guess. Yeah, just exactly. I just want the button, and this will install the button. Should. <laughs> it should. Let's try. Let's try. And so then so I can do C button, put some text in it and close the tag. Crossing fingers at home. <laughs> it works. I there mean, yeah. But uh, well, what can we do? Uh, with you it? can put, yeah, go, go on the documentation. W one thing we added uh, was the um, delay mechanism, which is quite a, kind of funny. So if you uh, go a bit below and you look for the waiting or the delay um, you can have a the waiting one looks like Knight Rider you know with the David Asseloff um, oh yes <laughs> you, you got me interested now <laughs> imagine you have a button uh, you clicked on it and you're waiting for some kind of um, API to, to answer you can put your button in waiting mode Lots of people do that with some kind of circular a circle mm -hmm. loader, and we tried something else so we can still have the text, uh, still have the button that is exactly the same size. So when you click on it, it doesn't change, it doesn't move. Okay. Um, and that was the basic idea okay. behind okay. The, the waiting mode. And we also have, you, you can use a short of uh, the delay one where you just put delay. Uh, I think there's a, a default value. Mm, yeah. Where is backlog? Uh -huh. Oh yeah, I see your, your mouse cursor, but it's not where it's supposed to be. <laughs> ah, yeah, thank you, WebRTC. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you Another, can put uh, delay and just add the delay attribute on the button. And so when you have this, when you click on it, the action is triggered. Um, yeah, maybe you put delay equals three, maybe, or, or five. Uh, and the action behind the, um, the button will only be triggered once the delay is, is um, finished okay. and you can cancel at any time. We are using this instead of confirms uh, dialogues in a few places. Mm. Mm. That's, That's nice. nice. Especially to prevent you, prevent you from stopping your production application with a <laughs> million users, you know. Um, That's nice. <laughs> but we, we also have confirms for deletion. That's just in, in a few places it, it's, it helps uh, a bit.
Great. I think that's cool. Like the CDN works. Yeah, and so yeah, it works really. What well. I really like in Backlight right there is that you are able to see the four uh, stories at once. Mm. And when you are working on the component, I mean, it's it's uh, it's just awesome to have that because I I often want to see everything at the same time. And if you go on on the um, on our storybook. I'm doing you advertising right now, sorry. <laughs> but when you no have worries. this... Do as much as you, you want. <laughs> <laughs> but when you have this locally and you have library reload and on this page when you are in the docs um, tab, you have all your stories, but the live reload for all of this code is so much uh, slow. It's so slow to, mm. to reload. So having a a, a quick view of every state at the same time when you're um, fiddling with the CSS and JavaScript, it's it's just awesome. Yeah. You have quite some... Uh... Yeah, it's a button, you know. <laughs> but the, the waiting and the yeah. delay is a bit more different that, than maybe most um, yep. uh, design system. Mm. Absolutely. Speaking about design system, who are you styling those different components because the color is united, the font face also. So where does they come from? Is this a set of custom properties shared between the different components? What is it? So if you go in the, the GitHub repository, uh, and that's something I really liked when you showed the tokens, Jason, in the last episode. But right now, in, if you go in SRC um, styles, we started a default theme. <laughs> and it's just, uh, I think the version that is there is just the beginning. We, we have a lot of um, dimensions, sizes, colors that are hard-coded in, in all components. And the idea was, let's do this first, and then we'll move them to some kind of theme with design tokens in the right way but we we can't really decide what's the best way to do it uh, at first and right now we are in the a good place to start thinking about that so we started uh, with a few examples but if i were able to have what you showed off last time with uh, some kind of json format for mm. for for tokens and colors etc that would be awesome to to use the to work on the on the component library for the um, um, customization we don't have that much um, CSS custom properties that are uh, exposed right now we have a few of them but we we didn't do that much right now because we don't have the use for them um, and that may um, and we will probably evolve in with time yeah, speaking about JSON file to do to declare your different tokens. Um, did you ever consider using style dictionary to declare yeah, your I, tokens and build your uh, your final host CSS files and so on? I didn't know about this very specific uh, project and format, but when I saw it uh, a few days ago, I really liked the the way it was uh, described. So. I will definitely consider using that format and 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 use it. We we will probably use it for colors and maybe a few sizes mm. at first. For the fonts right now, our uh, our whole uh, collection of web components doesn't impose fonts except for the monospace fonts. Um, but because through um, the Shadow DOM, you can specify a font from the outside and it will go through the shadow DOM and be applied on the component. Uh, we we just don't define one and the user can define a font from the outside of the component. Okay, so it's totally the responsibility of the user agent. Yeah. And, and, and you don't force anything. Okay. That's yeah. Cool. Except for the monospace yeah. font. Yeah. Okay. Which is a default most of the <laughs> time. <laughs> awesome. Do you want to try another one or? Um... Oh, I really want that chart. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that chart. <laughs> but now that you have the yeah the smart. Uh, Let Let's just try something try uh, because I think it's uh, it's 
let's see if I can do that also with an HTML. Mm, I think yeah. we can do a body like this. It's not perfect, but I will uh, will do for the quick demo. Yeah, we will clean up after. There we go. <laughs> it works. And so um, if I'm going back to this, yeah. and we said, okay, let's try out the let's try out the button, and you say we have this. So this can be uh, this can be set in the header. Yeah. Or in the head, sorry. So we can just do this, uh, copy paste this into our uh, HTML file, and then this gives us the ability to right away okay. use it. To use the button, yeah. I was wondering, the on the right, is it's an iframe, right? Yep. Yeah. The the compilation and, and live reloading, etc., happens on the server? Nope, it's all in web workers. It's oh everything happens in your brother and uh, only in your brother. Yeah, it's really nice. It doesn't work. Mm. So um, why, 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 why? Probably a missing closing tag or something like this. I guess so. Don't you need a? Is it HTML. supposed to be a, yeah, a regular HTML yeah. file? Don't you need a dump or something? It's supposed to, it's unable to parse, so unless I made a mistake. Mm. Could it be the, the doc type? I don't see why. That's a strange doc type, HTML. No. Yeah. Mm. Add script. Is there an angle bracket after? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it should work. Could you try by just removing the CC button uh, tag? Just to yeah, maybe it's push, just my loads. my button messing everything. <laughs> no, no, no. no. That, mm, interesting. No, that's no. more about the script. Mm -hmm. um, why can I? Mm -hmm. This should work. This should totally work. Um, yeah, if if you remove the script tag, just to see if um, there is something different happening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's perfectly loading. So it's it's the script instruction. Yeah. Why? But um, type module soc. Um, let me. Also, uh, not expecting a custom element. Um, not that sure. Mm. Oh, um, maybe we maybe we're missing the meta curse. Oh, is it? Yeah. Are we really using W three schools on this stream? <laughs> <laughs> Shh, you did. You, you didn't see anything. <laughs> it never. It never happens. I just pick up everything. I <laughs> it never happens. You, you didn't see it. Uh, that's um, weird. Uh, this should have worked and I will two parts. That's strange. Um, that's strange. But you know, you know what we could try? We could try something using, um, using MDG, MDGS. Just oh. create a, an index.md file and import the script tag. Yeah. I do love the MDGS syntax. It seemed just so natural, you know? Just importing by just specifying suffixing your, your code blocks. It's just yeah. so simple. And those are displayed in the in the rendered markdown because it's just code blocks. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't That's want it. to load um, it. I, yeah, you 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 should put um um tick 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 gs script and and import the script directly. If you do a, a code block yeah. for GS. But but then I don't use the uh, um, the, the, the specific script tag. Um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because obviously yeah, we mm. can do this. Um but then import. But we don't use the um, Yeah. Would work. That's weird. Yeah. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, th- so uh, that's what we were talking about. Because um, it's just an HTML file, the button is in serif font because yeah. you didn't yeah. specify one. <laughs> and so by default. And that's kind of okay because if you want comics or, or uh, Helvetica or anything, you can set it up yourself. Yeah. yeah. Let's uh, let's try. Um, actually, I just uh, I just figure out something. Um, and this came to my. Uh, I think I heard feed. about that one. Uh, I need to. No. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, I wanted to try it, so that's what we're gonna do. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> nice. Oh, so is it importing some CSS via JavaScript? Yeah, yeah okay. it is. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> we, bu- we bundled it. Why not? After all. Yeah, yeah, right. It's not, it's <laughs> and everything inside a mar- inside a Markdown file. Yeah, to, sure. To top it all. <laughs> what it's twenty twenty two, you know. Yeah. And yeah, no, so that's just oh. incredible. But it's it's totally related to your, your previous question about um is it rendered on the server side? And yeah. it's so it's rendered in web workers and it's um powered by Vite. So yeah. uh, we forked the Vite project and we made it run into a web broker a web worker that's in, so in the nice. Yeah. So yeah, it's called Browser Vite. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, and, and, and it's just it's, looking uh, uh, the page. Also, those are part of the links we're gonna put on the video. Yeah, first of it. Okay. Those are our open nice. source projects, by the way. Yeah, so it totally uh, allow you to to run your vid setup directly into your browser so um okay so yeah we're importing markdown file with javascript and everything is powered by Vita. <laughs> yeah but i wish uh, we could have um uh demo this um demo this i think we need to figure out why it didn't work but uh, because i think this is this is really cool uh yeah. you can drop this off yeah. on a on a wordpress uh, project exactly a, and it just works then, because it's just html basically Oh, yeah. And I, and one thing that maybe one thing that maybe we can show up, uh, which I think is interesting as well. Let me open. But uh, it works in the story, right? Yeah, we can we can see what's going on and and yeah. See, yeah. So basically, what's happening is that it's the only part that is dynamic. If you load this specific URL, we are looking at which components you require, which language, and which version. We try to look at every sub dependencies and and their own dependencies and so on, and we list them in reverse tree order. Uh, so we are importing them at once the whole graph uh, in in one uh, one load without waiting for some kind of waterfall effect. Mm. And yeah. I got the idea from um, uh, Guy Bedford from uh, JSPM. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, really smart. What's and, nice and is this if, actually works. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I was about to say if you change the version to like 7.4 or something, you may just have the same, you know, yeah. So everything was the same except for the translations. Yeah. And so because the version is not in the path of the files that we load, we can reuse them from version to version. Yeah. Mm. In the cache. Yeah, and you can and you can see how um, how this will be cached by the browsers uh, yeah. efficiently. Let's say you have a page with just the button, so you get the the, the shared dependencies yeah. that are I guess, in here. Vendor. Yeah, and then you get just uh, this, and then you load another page that has the button and or the CC beta, and yeah, you just exactly. what the only thing the browser is going to load is uh, what it never saw, which is the beta. So this this completely work, um, and uh, if we look at just how much it costs to load this stuff, 
Uh, oh, yeah, that, that's not easy. <laughs> not easy, easy. Yeah. 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 So we can see how compact this is. It is. We try to. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is that if you go back and if you load CC toggle, uh, I think it's one of them that doesn't require the translation system. So 2G and 1O. Sorry. Yeah. And so this one is sent yeah. loading the translation system. So it's not configuring it to French or English. It's just loading lit, the repeat lit directive and, and the component. Oh, sorry. Bless you. Thanks. Is it, is it something like some kind of tree shaking your performing on the back to to know which part you need to load or to not we load. build uh you mean which imports we need to list yeah, yeah so we built a roll-up plugin that when we build a version we look at every dependencies of uh, the whole uh, which component needs which uh, chunk etc mm -hmm. And we build some kind of manifest. So if you go on the work in progress UI, UI you had just before, so just components.cleverclad.com. Uh, yeah, that one. If you open the, um, the dev tools, you'll see a request to the, the manifest in the network. And you can just reload. Yeah, and so where is the manifest? Something is called manifest somewhere. Sorry, I'm in tricky. Yeah, depths manifest. <laughs> sorry, depths manifest seven six zero. This uh, JSON file is containing the list of all the modules and which um, dependencies each modules have, and so the dynamic endpoint is just looking at this manifest and trying to list all the dependencies you need for the components you re you required. <coughs> That's really smart. That's really all smart. the rest is already built and stored on an object storage. So it's the only dynamic part is building this uh, list of imports. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Interesting. And obviously, why uh... is using the manifest to list the components that are available. If you go to yeah. version five or something, you'll have less components mm -hmm. available. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's animated. <laughs> it's using the CC uh, expand component. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> that we haven't seen. Let me uh, put the CC. I mean, procrastination, here. right? <laughs> We won't wow. be able to stop, George. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's just broke. a component where you put some stuff in, inside it okay. and uh, and it uh, automatically animates when the content change height. changes. Yeah. yeah, and it's not that easy to do. <laughs> no, no, yeah, you can look at really the implementation. Complex. It's it's really um, messy JavaScript stuff to... <laughs> To animate and calculate the target height, etc. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Great, oh, superb. Yeah, uh, sure. um, I think we we are coming to an end for yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, it was it was really, really both exciting and really interesting because we we saw a lot of different things, different topics, different techni techniques. Yeah. It was really, and it was super cool to go into those uh, nifty little uh, details. Yeah. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, you, you were. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, for yeah. having me. Yeah. yeah, thank you for being here. It was, it was really, really cool. Thanks for accepting this invitation. And um, is there anything you want to add before we were ending the stream? Uh, no, I. I... I would say if people if people are interested in what we've been doing to maybe try a similar approaches, uh, don't hesitate to to ping me on Twitter to ask questions, because when we created the smart CDN, for example, we think other people could need some similar thing, and it's open sourced, so maybe we could work together on this. And um, yeah, 
feel free to, to ping me for any questions. Always great to, to discuss web components and, and standards in general. Awesome. We will put everything um, everything in the, um, the, the video, video page description. on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, of course. Um, let me also talk a little bit about um, a new platform that we are launching in, in the next days. Or it's already launched, but we are trying to, to, to put it up. Uh, which is a community.webcomponents.dev platform. Um, it's um, it's a, a forum platform where you are uh, all invited to come and to discuss about web components and web standards. Um, it's almost here. You are all welcome. Please come say hello, post a few contents. Um, Hubert, you're also moderator on the platform. Uh, yeah. I think so. So, um, so, so yeah, uh, feel free. It's, it's definitely a, a gift from the Riot to the web components community to try to make another space where everyone should be able to share and discuss and question everything about web components. So you're all welcome on it. Especially whatever the tool you're using to build web components. We yeah. need more cross, you know, community uh, um, discussion and, and, um, and stuff to exchange. Yeah, yeah, this is really open to uh, uh, leads, then seal fast, and okay. any of the sixty-one <laughs> libraries that yeah. uh, that is on the on all the ways to make a web component. Great, definitely. So, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you both of us for, um, for this session. It was really awesome, and um, see you next week, uh, folks, for another episode. This time with Ben Myers, we're going to talk about accessibility. Um, nice. so I continue either and uh, enjoy your week in the meantime bye bye everyone bye bye thank you bye bye